Hey everyone, so I've been absent for quite some time, but the videos are going to come back pretty regularly right now. Since we just came back to university and it's an online class, I just wanted to make sure my students are always up to date with all the softwares that we're working on. And for one of my classes, I have how to start with Maya 2018. Uh, this version of 2018 doesn't really matter. You can use 19, 20, it's pretty much going to be the same concept. Since we're going to work on the very basic structures of how to model, render, animate inside of Maya and all the other little tools we're going to be using. So now here I have Maya opened in front of you. And the first little things you have to learn is how to use the hotkeys on your keyboard to be able to manipulate or maneuver around Maya. So Alt left click will allow you to rotate around the scene. Alt and your scroll wheel button will allow you to pan the view. So it goes left to right and to zoom in and zoom out. It's basically scroll wheel in scroll wheel out. If you do not have a scroll wheel on your mouse, it's also Alt, right click and move the mouse back and forth. And you're able to zoom in and zoom out. Now, Maya, unlike other 3D softwares like 3ds Max, has the user interface pretty a little bit complex in the sense that everything is in front of you. So on the top piece right here, I have my files, edit, create, select, modify, and all of the above. These will change according to what you're working on. What do I mean by this? On the left side right here, so let me zoom in very quickly, you have something called rigging. If I click down on the menu, you have modeling, rigging, animation, VFX or visual effects, rendering, and you can customize this to your liking. So for beginners, you're going to be working on modeling at first. And for my classroom, we're going to work on modeling first. So if you notice here, you have modified display a window, skeleton, skin, deform, constraint. These tools are specific to the rigging tab. If we go to modeling, these will change to mesh, edit mesh, mesh tools, mesh display, curves, surfaces, deform, and so on and so forth. So they do change. Now, all of these tools are also present over here. Okay, so this is just like a menu, just in case you get lost and you want to find specific tools that you're looking for, but pretty much they are here. All right, so let me zoom out very quickly. Now, to understand how 3D softwares work, you have a gizmo. Meaning that when I take a shape, so let's say here a sphere, all I'm going to do is click on the sphere right here inside of poly modeling tab. So here I have curved surfaces, poly modeling. I'm going to click on the sphere. It's going to create a sphere in the middle. To zoom in on this sphere, I have to press F on my keyboard. So F will allow me to zoom in. Alt left click will allow me to rotate around it. Alt middle click button on the mouse will allow me to pan around it and I can zoom out with my scroll wheel. So to understand how the 3D software works, you have three axes that are part of a gizmo. This is the gizmo. It has three axes, X, Y, and Z. All right. So to be able to move this object, let me scale it up a little bit first. There we go. So when I press W on my keyboard, it allows me to move the object. So I can click on an axis and just move it with my mouse wherever I want it. So here, click on this one, move here, click on this one, go up or down, forward, side to side, anywhere I want to. So this is me clicking on the individual arrows. You can see them getting highlighted. Every time I close to them, they highlight and I can click on them. All right. Something else that you notice is that you have boxes around it as well. So you have a green box, a red box, and a blue box right here. What these do is allow you to move the actual object on two axes at the same time. So the green one will allow you to move on X and Y, sorry, on X and Z, since this is the, Z, the depth uh, axis. So I can click it and move. You can see them all highlighted like so, and they will not, the shape will not move up. So if you notice, it will not move up if I click on this one. The blue will move the Y and the Z axis together, but it will not move side to side. The red will move the Y and the Z, sorry, the Y and the X axis together. Okay, so if I want to move the entire shape on its own, all together, all three axes, I click on the middle right here. And you can see I can move it up, down, left, right, bottom, straight, doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's the W key allowing you to move objects. The E key allows you to rotate the object itself. 
So let me scale down a bit my gizmo. I scale up the gizmo by pressing minus or plus on my keyboard. So if I want to rotate the shape, I'm able to rotate it this way. So what I'm doing is clicking on the actual line itself. X. I can also rotate it from anywhere I want to. But this is not very much preferred. You might lose the, the degrees that you're actually rotating on. All right. If I press R on my keyboard, so this was the E key, E is rotate. If I press R on my keyboard, it allows me to scale. So shrink or grow the shape I'm working on. So here I have on Y, I have on Z, X. I can also scale two axes at the same time, two axes at the same time. Same here, or scale uniformly. Now, if you make a mistake, always Control Z allows you to return. So if I did the mistake here, Control Z returns to the previous one. Control Z returns constantly to the previous function that you have created. Okay. Now, like any other 3D software, you have to understand that this is the perspective view, meaning I always see X, Y, and Z all together into one single view. But what if you want to see the top view? the side view, the front view. These will change. How do you change these inside of Maya? I press space, right click, and I have perspective view. So I have right click and I'm holding down the right click button on my mouse. And I can drag my mouse to perspective view, left view, top view, back view, right view, bottom view, all of these. Also, what you can do is just press space and let go. It will open up the different menus. So this is my top, written right here, my front, my side, perspective. Let's say I go to the top view, I press my space again on it, it will reopen it in a much larger scale. Space to get out, click on the front view, space to go in. Space to go out, press on my perspective, space to go in. Okay? These are the basic attributes of how to maneuver around my shape. So very important as well. Every time you create a shape, it will create in the middle. So just have fun in the first few days trying to create multiple shapes and stuff like that. Scale them, move them, place them, whatever you want. Okay. Now something else very important inside of 3D modeling. Let me move it back to the center. There we go. So what else do you have? You have here on the right side a few tools you can use. So you have this, we'll get into it later. This, we don't use it. This as well, this is something pretty important. It's called the Attribute Editor, right here. Okay? Inside of Maya, unlike other softwares, everything that you do to the shape is being recorded inside of the Attribute Editor. So if I move, change the shape, change the colors, everything will be recorded here. So here I have P cube on the first one. It tells me that I moved it to minus 3.9. So to understand a little bit, the grid, this grid is zero, zero in the middle. So when I move, you can see on the right side, it's actually moving the shape to different places. All right. So what you're going to do here is everything is recorded. If I want to add some subdivisions, so let's say I want to add more resolution to this or subdivide the shape a bit more, I'm able to do it from here inside of the polycube one. So six by six by six. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Let me just turn it off. There we go. Okay. I also have the color. I can change the color if I want to. So typically what we use is P cube polycube and the Lambert one, which is the name of the color itself. Okay. This is inside of the attribute editor. I also have the tool settings, which I don't really use that much and the normal channel for, you're going to see this later on with multiple objects. Typically we just stay on the attribute editor to be able to see whatever we're doing. So let's say for an example, I'm going to extrude the shape out. As you can see here, PQ, PQ shape, extrude face. It actually recorded the modification I did. So to understand how this works, create a new box. Perfect. Everything revolves around the right click. 
Okay, I have my polycube. For me to be able to modify this cube, I have to right click and say, do I want edges, faces, vertices, what have you. So faces are these big blocks made of quads. Quads is basically a single square with four sides, with four segments and four vertices. That's a quad. So these are quad, quad, quads, quads. Six quads in total, that's six faces for a cube. Okay, for vertices or edges, sorry, for segments or edges, I have one, two, three, four on the top, five, six, seven, eight in the middle, and I have another four on the bottom, making 12 in total. For vertices, I have these points. Each vertex is basically held by three segments, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four on the bottom, making eight in total vertices for a single cube. Once I'm done selecting whatever I want, I can go to object mode to deselect everything or press Q on your keyboard to deselect everything. So let's say I want to add an edge in the middle. Right here I can select by left clicking and dragging all of these. As you can see they are highlighted by this color, the kind of orange color. Shift right click. So right click allows me to change edge, face, vertex, whatever. Shift right click will allow me to modify what I'm doing. So I want to connect these together. So I can go to connect component and just let go of everything. I created a segment. Select all of these. Shift right click. Connect component. Select all of these. Shift right click. Connect component. Something else you can do is also insert edges. So I'm going to press Q all the way so I can deselect everything I've done. Shift right click and I want to say insert edge loop tool. This will tell me click and drag on edges. I can click and drag and create new edges all around. This helps the entire model to have a better resolution and more details. Perfect. So let's say right now I want to create a table. Press Q to deselect. Scale this up, scale this down. It's a very simple square table lift it up off the ground. This is the ground level. And what I'm going to do is select my edges, insert edge loop. I'm going to put one here, one here, here. So what I'm doing is just clicking and dragging where I want it to be. In the middle, one here and one on the bottom. Perfect. So now you have different options of smoothing inside of Maya, what do I mean by smoothing? When I press 1 on my keyboard, it's exactly the same it was. When I press 2, it shows me how it can be after smoothing, and 3 is the final result, result sorry, while it's smoothed. Okay, so 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to stay on 1. I'm still going to add a few edges so I can create the legs. So what I'm going to do here is add insert edge loop tool. I'm going to create one more here. One more here, here, perfect, and I have one more here. Q to deselect, right click, face, click on this one, shift click to get another one, shift click to get this one, and shift click to get this one. So I'm selecting the faces themselves, you can see them highlighted. Shift right click, extrude, and I can just take this down all the way and create the legs for my table. Right click object mode and press Q to deselect everything and now I have a table. Press 3. This is a problem. I need to add segments. Edges. Shift right click, insert edge loop tool. And I can just go here and put one here. 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 Here and on the bottom of the feet, so one here. Here. It doesn't have to be precise in the beginning. Just learn how to use the tools first. Press Q to deselect, right click, object mode, and now I can press 3, and now I have a proper table. Right? Not perfect, just proper. Okay? So this is just a small little introduction of how to work with Maya. Practice with the tools a little bit, get familiar with how to use the right click and the shift right click on each object, and you'll start seeing the results that you're looking for. So please follow me. 
and subscribe and like the videos because I'm going to start doing a lot more of these videos as my class progresses through the semester. So if you're following with us, that's awesome. And if you have any comments or concerns, just please type them down inside of the video and I'll be more than happy to respond to them. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.